Hopefully you viewed the first video where we talked about the direct write-off method and the percentage of sales method under the allowance method. The allowance methods are the methods that we're going to be using in this class because they match revenues and expenses much better in the right time periods. We've already done the percentage of sales, so if you haven't learned that well, you need to go back and look at that video again and look at the chapter. The chapter has very good examples for this method. So this is one option. Well, the business might decide to do it based off of percentage of accounts receivable. This is really my favorite method, the percentage of accounts receivable, because what you do is you take your accounts receivable and multiply it by a percentage that you think is going to be uncollectible. So let's take a look here. I've now added this line. This is the same information from the first video. Sales are 1 million, accounts receivable 200,000. Percentage of sales was 1%, but we're not going to use that. We used that in the last video. Balance in the allowance account right now is 1,000. So let's put our T account up again. And here is our allowance account, and it currently has a debit balance in it. Okay? Now here's what I've added. The percentage of accounts receivable is 4%. So what we're going to do is we're going to take 4% of our accounts receivable because we're using the percent of accounts receivable method. So 4% of 200,000 is $8,000. When we did this using percentage of sales, that was our adjustment. When we use the percentage of accounts receivable, that percentage is the ending balance, which makes perfect sense. If you're using 4% of accounts receivable is our allowance, then we want that to be our allowance. We want that to be our ending balance, 8,000. What is our balance? It's 1,000. We want it to be 8,000, so here's the difference. When you're using this method, you take the percentage, that's the ending balance, and you have to back in to your adjustment. So there's our adjustment, 7,000. So we're going to Debit, bad debt expense, 7,000, and credit the allowance for doubtful accounts, 7,000. So there's our adjustment. So let's take a look at the balance sheet. What would the balance sheet look like? Okay, well, accounts receivable, like we said, is 200,000. So that's what would be on our balance sheet less our allowance, which once again is the money set aside for those customers that aren't going to pay us. So we have, now look, not the adjustment, we want the ending balance, 8,000. So there is our allowance, so our ending balance is 192,000. Now what happens when it's this customer that we call up doesn't pay us? Okay, so this is what our account is at the end of the year. Next year, Let's say it's January 1st, the very next day, let's say we call up one of our customers and they say, you know what, we owe you 500, but we're not gonna pay you. So the write-off is the same. To write that off, you're going to debit the allowance, because like I always say, that's the purpose of the allowance. We have money set aside for those customers that aren't gonna pay. So when they don't pay, we use up that allowance. Well, using up the allowance would be a debit, because that will reduce our contra asset account. And then we credit accounts receivable. This write-off is the same entry using percentage of sales, percentage of accounts receivable, and we'll see percentage of accounts receivable aging. Okay, so now what happens to these accounts when we write it off by $500? Well, overall, nothing. What's going to happen to accounts receivable? Well. That's going to go down to 199500 but our allowance is going to go down 7500 So our overall net accounts receivable stays the same. Why is that? We don't want it to change because the change, the expense, was last year. Well, where is that $500 expense? It's part of this. This entry took place last year. It was an adjustment at year end for those customers that weren't going to pay us. So that was an adjustment to the allowance. It increased our allowance. And now we're just using up part of that allowance. And so the allowance then, from this write-off, goes down to 7500 just like we have right here. Now I realize this is confusing, and this is probably 
probably the toughest chapter in the textbook. Um, you really have to take some time and go through in, in detail how these things work. You've got to understand how the percentage of sales works inside and out, and then move on to the percentage of accounts receivable. They're similar, but there is a big difference. When you take that percentage, you do a different thing with the percentage. When you do it for percentage of sales, that's your adjustment. So that one's kind of a little bit easier, I think. That is your adjustment. When you do a percentage of accounts receivable, that's not your adjustment amount. That's going to be your ending balance. So you have one more step. You've got to back into your year-end adjustment. Okay. Well, what's the percentage of accounts receivable aging? Well, an aging is just taking your accounts receivable and dividing it up. Those that are current, those customers that are 1 to 30 days late, those customers that are 31 to 60 days late, those customers that are 61 to 90 days late. So what are we going to do with those? Well, we'll total them all up. All those that are current will have a total, and we'll take a percentage of those. The percentage is probably going to be pretty low because most of those people are probably going to pay us. Those customers that are uh, 1 to 30 days late, well, that percentage is going to be a little bit higher because they're already late. Those that are 31 to 60 days late, well, that percentage is going to be even higher because you know the later they get, the more likely is they're not going to pay us. So we take each one of those categories, multiply it by a percentage, and that percentage has to be given to you. You wouldn't know what it is. You would have to have that. And in the homework, it's given to you. And in the chapter, when you go over the examples there, it's given to you there also. So those percentages would be given to you. You'd multiply them all out by the corresponding balance in each, one, each category, and then you'd add them together. So let's just assume, I'm not going to go through that because it would be, take too much time up on this video. Um, so let's just assume that when we're doing the aging, I'm going to erase this right here. So this is the year-end adjustment. Let's assume when we do this aging that our ending balance is 11,000. Let's say when we add up all those balances, all of the aging account receivable times their percentage, when we add them all up, they add up to $1,000 even. Well, if they add up to 1,000, since this is a receivable method, a percentage of receivable method, we have to back into our adjustment. So our adjustment would be 12,000. So over here, we would debit it 12,000, credit the allowance 12,000. So what would happen here is this would be, okay, it's not the adjustment, it's what we want our ending balance to be, 11,000. So this would be 189,000. So then when we wrote off that $500, the next year when we write that off, what would happen is this. And so our ending balance, once again, would equal what it was before. Because the writing off of an accounts receivable under the allowance method has no overall impact on, it, on net accounts receivable. It impacts accounts receivable. It impacts the allowance, but in different ways opposite directions. So what that does is nothing. It makes no change. So hopefully this has helped you. Once again, I realize this is a very difficult chapter. You have to go over it very, very carefully. Make sure that you understand each concept before you go on to the next. First, it was the direct write-off method where you just write it off. Debit, bad debt, expense, credit the accounts receivable. It's easy, but it's just not used very often. The allowance methods is where we're setting up the contra asset account. The contra asset account is the allowance account. But then we have three different methods. The last video showed this method. This video is showing these two methods. Good luck with this. Make sure you go through the examples in the textbook. Make sure you go through the B problems carefully. Um, make sure that you really understand this well because you will definitely see this on your test. All right, good luck.